Hello, everyone. My name is May. I'm a solutions architect from Amazon Web Services. Imagine a world that is diverse, equitable, and inclusive, a world where difference is valued and celebrated. Together, we can forge women's equality and collectively, we can all break the bias. I'm also a co-host for AWS She Builds Tech Skills, streaming monthly on Twitch and YouTube. This program is showcasing technical women with demos and projects where you can learn about cloud skills on AI, ML, DevOps, data analytics, security, or many more. We also have the AWS She Builds community group on LinkedIn if you want to join our group of women who are passionate about their career in tech. Thanks, May. My name is Mai, and together with May, we host the AWS She Builds Tech Skills show on Twitch and um, also a solutions architect from AWS. For International Women's Day, we bring you this special video of AWS solutions architects from all across the globe. Today, we have six amazing women, including Eileen Lee, Nelly Lovchikova, Pony Mashand, Natalie White, Deval Parikh, and Victoria Saman, who will talk about their favorite AWS services from AWS reInvent 2021. Hello, everyone. My name is Poonima Chand. My pronouns are she and her. I'm a solutions architect in the strategic accounts team at AWS, and I'm based out of Dallas, Texas. Today, I'm here to talk to you about my favorite feature release from AWS reInvent 2021. While there have been so many exciting announcements from reInvent, if I need to pick a favorite, it would be Amazon SageMaker serverless inference feature. This feature perfectly intersects two of my personal interests, AWS serverless and machine learning. Amazon SageMaker serverless inference is a new inference option in Amazon SageMaker. With this feature, you can easily deploy machine learning models for inference without configuring or managing any of the underlying infrastructure. This takes away the undifferentiated heavy lifting of selecting and managing your servers for running your inference. Serverless inference integrates with AWS Lambda to offer you high availability, built-in fault tolerance, and automatic scaling. To use this feature, Simply select the serverless option when deploying your model and Amazon SageMaker automatically provisions, scales and turns off compute capacity based on the volume of inference request. You can create SageMaker inference endpoint from the console, AWS SDKs or using AWS command line interface. With SageMaker serverless inference, you only pay for the duration of running the inference code and the amount of data processed not for any of the idle time. During times when there are no requests, serverless inference scales your endpoint down to zero to help you minimize your cost. This makes it a cost effective option for inference use cases with unpredictable traffic patterns. This feature is currently available in preview in select AWS regions. To learn more, visit the Amazon SageMaker deployment webpage for detailed steps on how to get started, see the SageMaker serverless inference documentation, which also includes a sample notebook. Thank you, and I hope you have fun running machine learning inference using Amazon SageMaker serverless inference. Hi, everyone. I'm really excited to join SheBuilds Tech Skills today to talk about some of my favorite analytics announcements at reInvent 2021. My name is Eileen, and I'm a Solutions Architect at AWS, based in Sydney. There were quite a number of analytics announcements at reInvent, including serverless capability for some of the analytics services such as EMR, Redshift, and Managed Service for Kafka or MSK. So it was quite difficult to just choose one or two favorite announcements. But one of my favorite announcements is AWS Lake Formation Govern Tables and Storage Optimization and Row Level Security features um, that were announced. So currently, if you are replicating data from 
a database into a data lake on S3. And if you are replicating the changes to the data in your database as well, you have to write custom code to handle the changes, the updates or the deletes um, in your data lake. And you have to write custom code to provide a consistent view of that data to your users. So lake formation govern tables is a new type of table on Amazon S3 that supports updates and deletes in your data lakes. As data is added or changed, lake formation automatically manages conflicts and errors to ensure that all users see a consistent view of the data. Govern tables also monitor and also, um, automatically optimize how data is stored by compacting small files and delta files um, to optimize storage and also so that query times are consistent and uh, fast performing. In addition to um, tables and columns, late formation now supports row level and cell level permissions, uh, which makes it you know, more easy to restrict access to sensitive information by granting users access only to the parts of the data that they are allowed to see. And this can be very fine grained down to the cell level. So govern tables, row and cell level permissions are now supported through Amazon Athena, um, Redshift Spectrum, AWS Glue, as well as Amazon QuickSight. So if you have users who are querying the data in your data lake um, using those services, um, that now that makes use of the um, row and the cell level permissions that are configured in lake formation. Uh, the other favorite announcement um, that I have is Amazon Kinesis Data Streams on Demand. So Kinesis Data Streams is a serverless streaming data service that allows you to capture, process and store streaming data at scale. So previously, you would have to know the volume of data that um, you are sending to Kinesis Data Streams and the rates of data that you are sending to Kinesis Data Streams and configure you know, the number of shards to be enough to handle that volume and that rate. Uh, with Kinesis Data Streams On Demand, it's a new capacity mode for uh, Kinesis Data Streams where you don't need to configure upfront how many shards you need. When you choose the um, on-demand capacity mode, Kinesis Data Streams handles your workloads as they ramp up and down. Uh, and it handles up to double its previous peak right throughput um, that it observes over the past 30 days. So as your data streams um, right throughput hits, and hits a new peak, Kinesis Data Streams automatically scales the stream's capacity to handle that new peak as well. You can create a new on-demand data stream or you can convert an existing Kinesis data stream into the on-demand mode uh, and you don't have to provision and manage um, shards, um, servers, storage or throughput. So these are the two analytics announcements that I found um, to be really useful. I, have, I hope that you have a chance to check them out as well as some of the other announcements. Hi, I'm Natalie White, and I'm an Enterprise Solutions Architect at AWS. I was a developer before I came to AWS, so I was really excited about the developer tools and infrastructure as code announcements and sessions at reInvent 2021. First, I'm a huge fan of the AWS Cloud Development Kit, or the CDK, and it had a major version release to v2 at reInvent. If you haven't heard of it, the CDK is an open source software development framework that you can use to define your cloud infrastructure and your application resources using the programming languages that you're already familiar with. If you're not a developer, but you want to build that skill set, I've seen several examples just this year of customers who are more in the infrastructure space use AWS CloudFormation or the CDK or a combination of the two to deploy solutions and simultaneously upskill their teams. Since the CDK uses the most basic set of features in each programming language that it supports, learning Python or TypeScript or JavaScript to build 
using the CDK can scale to developing Lambdas and automating tasks that would otherwise have to be done manually. So don't think that just because you're not already a developer, you can't use infrastructure as code. It's all about choosing the right tool for the skill set that you already have or that you want to build. So the major version released to v2 solved a pain point with the CDK v1. With CDK v1, each CDK construct library was separate. That meant that installing and managing all the separate dependencies and their versions became a real pain point for our customers, especially for more complex architectures where lots of different services are being used or constructs are being shared. So the major change with CDK v2 resolves that with a single package, which makes the installation and maintenance of your CDK dependencies much more efficient. The CDK Construct Hub also went GA at reInvent, and it supports the AWS CDK, the CDK for Kubernetes, and the CDK for Terraform. And it allows our customers to publish their own constructs to share them publicly with other builders in addition to the constructs that AWS builds on your behalf. We know that customers are building amazing things using all three varieties of the CDK, so it's a great way for builders to get started quickly and to speed up innovation by broadening the number of authors who are building shareable, reusable constructs in all of the languages and frameworks that the CDK supports. Apart from all the new announcements, we had 25 breakout sessions in the DevOps space and they've all been published on YouTube. So if you didn't make it to reInvent in person or stream the content live, head over to the AWS Events YouTube channel and check them out. The DevOps sessions cover mechanisms and tools to help teams work together more efficiently, observability for applications and for infrastructure, and best practices for creating and sharing patterns through frameworks like Infrastructure as Code. So check them out and keep on building. Hi, my name is Nelly, and I'm a solutions architect here at AWS. But I'm also a developer. I love coding. That is why my favorite reInvent announcement in that Cloud Development Kit CDK version 2 got out of preview and generally available. Let me tell you a little bit about what is that. And I can tell you a lot, but I only have a few minutes. So, CDK is a declarative infrastructure as a code tool. Infrastructure as a code allows you to describe your resources in a code. Declarative means you define the end state of what you want to see, not the steps how to create. That would be imperative, and it's a completely different story. So what is CDK then? CDK is a multi-language software development framework for modeling cloud infrastructure as reusable components. Because it is declarative, we don't write actual code that is going to create our infrastructure. We are going to write a code that models that desired state we want for our resources. And then we pass this state for provisioning engines such as AWS CloudFormation. And it is going to look at the model and realize this configuration for us. We introduced the Cloud Development Kit CDK in 2018, and it became very, very popular. CDK is a technology of choice for many organizations. The power of CDK is flexibility, and also you don't need to learn any new concept. All previous knowledge you had as a developer is still relevant. Loops, conditions, classes, components, language syntax, even tooling. Multiple languages support. C-Sharp, Go, Java, Python, and TypeScript. So what came with the version 2? It is a single package now. You see, version 1 um, was modular. That has a lot of flexibility, but also uh, lots of management overheads. Now, if we were coding in a train, not having anymore, or during camping trip, yes, I'm the person who does that, and I don't have the internet, and I want to introduce new service. Oops. But with the version 2, all my tooling and dependencies are there, and I can model my infrastructure. Version management, way easier. Just update one package. The other thing, did you know that CDK is open source and you can contribute? That is why stable and mature constructs are separated from experimental. 
so you always can rely on main library. And the last thing I'm excited is assertion library. So you can write unit tests against your infrastructure as a code and have peace of mind. I already migrated all my projects to version 2 and enjoyed management simplicity. So if you haven't tried CDK yet, please join me. It is a pure pleasure. And if you already use version 1, check maybe version 2 would be a little bit better for you. That was Nelly Lovchikova with you. Happy coding! Hi everyone, my name is Stable Parikh and I'm a senior solutions architect at AWS. I'm based out of Los Angeles. I've been in the IT industry for over 15 years now. I started my career as a software development engineer at the Boeing company. And prior to joining AWS, I worked at AT&T as a software architect, building their systems to enable DevOps on AWS cloud. I'm also a container specialist at AWS and here to talk to you about my favorite feature at reInvent 2021. One of the newest launches at AWS this year in the container space is Carpenter. So what is Carpenter? Carpenter is an open source, flexible, vendor neutral, high performance Kubernetes autoscaler built with AWS. It improves your application's availability and your cluster's performance by providing right-sized compute resources like the AWS EC2 instances. So how does Carpenter work? It observes aggregated resource requests for unscheduled pods on Kubernetes and then makes decision to either launch new pods to reduce application scheduling latencies or terminate existing unused pods to optimize your infrastructure costs. Why was Carpenter introduced then? Prior to Carpenter, Kubernetes users needed to dynamically adjust compute capacity of their clusters by using EC2 autoscaling groups and the Kubernetes auto cluster autoscaler. About half of the Kubernetes customers on AWS have reported that configuring cluster autoscaling using Kubernetes cluster autoscaler is not only challenging, but also restrictive. So what are some of the use cases associated with Carpenter? Carpenter works with all kinds of Kubernetes applications but it performs particularly well with applications that require quick provisioning and deprovisioning of large number of resources for a diverse set of compute needs. A few examples of such applications include bad jobs to train machine learning models, applications that run simulations, and those that perform complex financial calculations, and many more. Some of the customer benefits of using Carpenter are, it improves your Kubernetes cluster efficiency. So as workloads scale up or down, Carpenter works directly with AWS EC2 to add or remove nodes, reducing the need for costly over-provisioning and preventing slow, expensive scale downs. It is built for scale. Carpenter makes cluster scaling decisions in seconds when demand changes, making compute resources available when your application needs it, even in the largest of Kubernetes cluster. And it reduces your operational overhead. By using Carpenter, you can focus on getting the most out of your Kubernetes applications instead of worrying about how to provision, manage, or even scale your compute needs. Finally, if you're interested in learning more on running managed Kubernetes containers on the cloud, go to aws.amazon.com forward slash EKS. To learn more about the AWS Carpenter project, go to carpenter.sh. I hope you enjoyed this video. Cheers. 
Hello everyone, my name is Victoria and I'm a senior partner solutions architect at AWS based in New York. I am excited to join today She Builds Tech Skill Show and tell you about my personal favorite service announcement during reInvent, AWS IoT Twin Maker. And before I tell you more about this awesome service, I want to share with you a story so you understand why I'm so excited about it. I started my career as a controls engineer. I was responsible for designing supervisory systems to control operations, uh, processes, and production plans. So for one of my projects, I needed to develop screens to allow operators to control a very complex mixing operations. And I took uh, like a web of pipes and valve clusters. And when I first looked at this, I thought, well, how can I build intuitive screens so that operators easily understand which valve is which and uh, how to control it for mixing flows. I decided to create an isometric view of the room. The problem, however, that the standard libraries did not include elements in isometric projection. So I partnered with an AutoCAD engineer in my company and together we drew valves in AutoCAD, rotated each of them under different angles, exported them as images, and later on, I assembled all of this in supervisory screens and added logic and animation. Now, imagine if I had a service where I could import existing 3D models, CAD files or BMI files, that would automatically create 3D view of physical environment and allow me just to overlay data points on top of it. Well, you know <laughs> what the service is called. It's AWS IoT Twin Maker. AWS IoT Twin Maker is a new AWS IoT service that helps developers to create digital twins of real-world systems. It has several capabilities. Number one is Model Builder. AWS IoT Twin Maker provides a flexible modeling capability to represent digital twins. The Model Builder allows you to create entity models and visual assets. You can create entities that represent digital replicas of your equipment for example, a valve or a pump, and specify custom relationships between these entities. Number two is data connectors of components. For your digital twin, you may need to bring data from different data sources. Uh, with AWS IT Twin Maker, it makes it simple to combine your data in a single service without recreating another data store. It provides built-in data connectors for AWS IoT Sidewise, Amazon Kinesis Video Stream, Amazon Simple Storage Service, as well as enterprise applications. AWS IoT Twin Maker also provides a framework using AWS Lambda for you to create easily custom data connectors to other data stores. One of my colleagues created a connector for Siemens MindSphere. Number three is a SIM composer. AWS IoT Twin Maker provides a console-based 3D SIM composition tool to create visualizations in 3D. You can bring your previously built 3D or CAD models into your resource library in Amazon S3. It makes it easy for you to bind data model in entities with your visualization. You can add tags on top of this base scene to connect a specific 3D location with data streams. For example, you can add a temperature tag uh, on your mixing equipment or even add a link to user documentation. You can create uh, AWS IoT Maker, you can use AWS Twin Maker to create your web applications. It provides plugin for Grafana so that you can use to create dashboards with 3D scenes and other widgets. The dashboards use AWS IoT Twin Maker's unified data access API to populate different widgets. I wish I could use AWS IoT Twin Maker for my past project. Some of the common use cases for AWS IoT Twin Maker include creating a holistic view of your operation processes uh, with faster and less effort, uh, driving optimization of building operation, increasing production output, and improving equipment efficiency. I hope you enjoyed this overview. Thank you. For those of you listening, I hope you continue to be role models for women out there. And speaking of which, make sure you check out the AWS SheBuilds Tech Skills channel on YouTube and live streaming on Twitch as well on the AWS Twitch channel. This is Mai. And May. 
Let's net out together on International Women's Day.